This training video is the first in a three-part series designed to illustrate the most important facets of paver installation. This segment will focus on the first steps in the project, planning and base preparation. Extraordinary outdoor landscape projects start with a great design. This project was designed with Uvision 3D Landscape Creator, a three-dimensional software program from Unilog that lets you design just about any landscape project. Regardless of the format or the design, it's important that it include all materials and relevant measurements, including the location of utilities like buried cables and gas lines. Measurements, elevations, and locations are transferred from the plan to building, edges, and grass. Fluorescent string and marking paint is used to mark all important coordinates. Measurements and locations are always double-checked. All structures, pillars, paver areas, and gardens are marked. Marking the garden areas helps avoid unnecessary excavation. Edging all the sod areas with a shovel makes it much easier for a machine to strip the sod from the surface. Several days before they are needed, materials should arrive on site. Materials are unwrapped and double-checked to ensure they have arrived as ordered. If access permits, bundles of pavers are positioned as close to the project site as possible without hindering excavation and base preparation. When placing materials beside the project area is not possible, access for trucks or loaders is planned in order to get materials where they are needed. In planting areas, only the sod is removed to conserve good topsoil. Only if the soil is very poor will both the sod and topsoil be removed. Further excavation in the hard scaping areas removes heavy clay soils and subsoils, which hold water and can cause frost lifting in cold climates. Notice how clean the edge is because of the edging we did earlier along the painted lines. Setting up a laser level helps establish the proper amount of excavation and gravel heights. For pavers in a walkway or patio, we recommend excavating a minimum of six inches. But depending on the site conditions, this could vary plus or minus three inches. Refer to your Unilock tech guide for additional base recommendations. Depending on the grade of property, Deeper excavation may be needed in some areas, and very little in others. Excavated dirt should never be reused to fill in low areas, because certain soils, such as clay, will not compact properly and may cause settlement problems later. Once excavation is complete, a ramming compactor or a jumping jack is used. This helps remove any air pockets or voids in the subsoil, so that future settling doesn't take place. The location of vertical units, as well as the outer limits of the entire project are marked out on this smooth, fully excavated surface. Fireplaces and grill islands can be installed on a compacted gravel base, but are most often constructed on a poured concrete pad. These pads are to be formed and poured before any pavers are installed. The plan is used to confirm placement and elevation. Angled paver cuts are reduced by making sure that these vertical features are parallel and or square to the rest of the installation. Careful measurement and planning now can eliminate a lot of cutting later. This type of gravel is a graded three quarter inch crusher run gravel, which is what is typically approved for road work. This type offers the best drainage and superior load bearing capacity. A ramming compactor and a plate compactor are used to make the area solid. The compaction should test out at 95% SPD, and the base should be sloped correctly with no dips or bumps greater than half an inch. This training video covered the basics of planning and base preparation. Please refer to the next module in this series, which covers the next steps in the project, screeding and the laying of pavers.